see Joshua chapter 8 from verse 1. The title is The Victory at I. From verse 1, and the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of war with thee, and rise, go up to I. See, I have given into thy hand the king of I, and the people, and his city, and his land. And thou shalt do to I and a king, as thou didst unto Jericho and a king. Only the spoil thereof, and the cattle thereof, shall ye take for a prey unto yourself. Lay thee an ambush for the city behind thee. So Joshua arose and all the people of war to go up against I. And Joshua chose out thirty thousand mighty men of valor and sent them away by night. In verse 10. And Joshua rose up early in the morning and numbered the people and went up and the elders of Israel before the people of Ai. And all the people, even the people of war that were with him, went up and drew near and came before the city and pitched on the north side of Ai. Now there was a valley between them and Ai. In verse 17, and there was not a man left in Ai or Bethel that went not out after Israel. And they left the city open and pursued after Israel. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Stretch out the spear that is in thy hand towards I, for I will give it into thy hand. And Joshua stretched out the spear that he had in his hand towards the city. And the ambush arose quickly out of their place, and they ran as soon as he had stretched out his hand. And they entered into the city, and took it, and hasted, and set the city on fire. Verse 26, For Joshua drew not his hand back, wherewith he stretched out the spear, until he had utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai, only the cattle and the spoil of that city Israel took for a prey unto themselves, according unto the word of the Lord which he commanded Joshua. And Joshua burnt Ai and made it an eve forever, even a desolation unto this day. And the king of Ai hung on a tree until evening tide. And as soon as the sun was down, Joshua commanded that they should take his carcass down from the tree and cast it at the en entering of the gate of the city and raise thereon a great heap of stone that remained unto this day. In verse 30, And Joshua built an altar unto the Lord God of Israel in Mount Eber, as Moses' servant of the Lord commanded the children of Israel, as it is written in the book of the law of Moses, and the altar of stones, of old stones, over which no man had lifted up any iron, and they offered thereon burnt offering unto the Lord and sacrifice his offering. And he wrote there upon the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he wrote in the presence of the children of Israel. Verse 34. And afterward he read all the words of the law. That word, that word of the law means the Bible. The blessing and the cursing according to all that is written in the book of the law. And there was not a word of all that Moses commanded, which Joshua read not before the congregation of Israel with the women and the little ones and the strangers that were conversant among them. Praise the Lord. Uh, we've just selected some verses and read some verses from Joshua chapter 8. Uh, it contains about 35 verses. Uh, like we studied last week, after upper week, after the scene of Achan, Achan brought defeat to the children of Israel. He, God commanded them that don't take from the spoil, from their cause thing. But Achan did not listen. Achan refused to obey the instruction of God. And God was angry with the entire children of Israel. And some people lost their life in the process. And they died when they tried to attack Ai. Even Ai was a small country. A small country of about 12,000 men. And despite the fact that Israel was more in number compared to Ai, they still defeated them because of sin, because of iniquity. After the sin of Achan was judged, God restored his favor on Israel and he reassured Joshua that he had not forsaken him or the people. So you look at from our text tonight in Joshua chapter 8, God reassured Joshua after they've repented, after they've judged Achan, after they've killed Achan, after God, they've carried out God's instruction and judgment on Achan, God decided to visit them again. And he gave Joshua instruction. He said, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not. Why was he telling Joshua not to be afraid? He said, Joshua, I know that you are bound to be afraid because your first attempt at fighting the people of Ai, you failed. And I told you the reason why you failed. Don't be afraid. But he gave Joshua instruction. So we see here that uh, he gave Joshua instruction on what he needs to do 
in order for him to get victory. So it became a great encouragement for Joshua when Joshua had the voice of the Lord. Joshua had the voice of the Lord, the instruction of God on what he needed to do. Joshua was encouraged because God was giving him instruction on how he needed to win the battle. Joshua had learned some lessons which we can follow in our daily life. What are the lessons that Joshua learned? Number one, when you confess your sins, when God reveals them to you, you get victory. We saw that when Achan confessed and the sin was judged, there was victory for the children of Israel. Victory came for them. And when you fail, refocus on God, deal with the problem and move on. So don't dwell on your failures. You know, as human beings, there can be times that you failed. Don't dwell on that failure because the devil will want to discourage you by allowing you to dwell on your failure. So when you have this, anytime, if there's anything that goes wrong in your Christian work and you have failed, don't dwell on that failure. Repent, refocus on God, deal with the problem so that it doesn't repeat itself again and move on. That's what God expects you to do because God does not kill wounded soldiers. He only encourages them. So he encourages them to move on. So the children of Israel here, he was encouraging them to move on. So don't dwell, don't focus on your failures. Uh, don't dwell on your failures. Don't remain on the floor. Stand up, pick up yourself and move on. And after you repented, make up your mind not to go back to what has offended the Lord and move on and you see that God will come to your head. The lessons we learn from our failures should make us better able to handle similar situations in the future. So when we learn whatever lessons we are learning, every experience in life is not meant to be wasted. Every experience in life is meant, even failures, you can learn from failures. You can learn from things that you didn't get right. It's just for us to become better persons so that every experience is not discarded and is not useless. They are very useful ones for us to learn from. Quickly, we're going to look at three points before we pray tonight. Number one, divine strategies that guarantees victory. Uh, divine strategies that guarantees victory. Uh, divine strategy that guarantees victory. Point two, the spirituality of life's battle. The spirituality of life's battle. And point three, the importance of God's word. The importance of God's word. Uh, point one, divine strategy that guarantees victory. Let's go back to our text in Joshua chapter 8. I read there from verse 1. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of war with thee, and arise, go up to I. See, I have given into thy hand the king of I, and his people, and his city, and his land. And thou shalt do to I and her king as thou did unto Jericho and her king. Only the spoil thereof and the cattle thereof shall ye take for a prey unto yourself. Lay thee an ambush for the city behind it. You see how God was very specific here. You know, it was given Joshua, this is the secret. This is how you are going to win this battle. This is how you are going to get this victory. God directed a strategy to Joshua for victory against I. It includes the, the details of that uh, strategy include something include the following number one the use of all the soldiers why why is that important if you look at that verse one it said take all the people of war with thee he didn't tell joshua to take five thousand if you recall from joshua chapter seven the previous chapter when he sent out the spies in verse three and verse four and they returned you know joshua sent out spy from joshua chapter seven to initially go and check out i that was on their first attempt when they failed and when he sent out the spies, the spies came back with a report. What was the report they came back with? Look at the report. Let's look at verse 3 of Joshua chapter 7. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite eye, and make not all the people to labor it up, for they are but few. You see, they, they, they underrated the enemy. He said, these enemies are few. So there went up Tita of the people, about 3,000 men, and they fled before the men of Ai. So Joshua was, they, they counseled him, those people counseled him, those pals advised him, gave him a advice and said, oh, don't bother to send the entire army of Israel against the city of Ai. Just send about two or 3,000. Joshua said, okay, no problem, I'll send 3,000. If you say they are not, they are not that many, 3,000 should be able to do the job. In their first move, Joshua used only 3,000 based on the advice from the spies. We saw that in Joshua chapter 7 verse 3 to 4, we are just read. This was not the plan of God. It wasn't the plan of God. That's why he didn't ask God. Remember from our study the other week, 
is that Joshua did not ask God how to go about the fighting eye. It was coming from the excitement of the victory over Jericho and victory of crossing Jordan River and conquering Jericho and went straight to war to fight I. He just sent spies there and spies advised him and he took the advice of the spy Ukline and Sinka. Like I said the other time, if he had asked God, God would have spoken to him on what he needed to do before he embarked on that battle. But he never did that. When we receive counsel, even if from respected people like Jethro, you know, respected people like uh, whoever the person may be, when we receive counsel, especially when we are in leadership position, it's important for us to present that counsel before the Almighty God. It's important for us to discuss the matter with God. It's important for us to pray about it before we take action with respect to that counsel. Yes, even if the counsel is biblical, it may not be what God wants us to do at that time. It may not be the direction God is leading us to do at that time. It's good to seek counsel from respected servants of God, from respected matured Christians. It's good to seek counsel. It's helpful. It's, it's actually commanded. But even when we get this counsel, especially if we are leaders, it's important to present this matter to God. In Exodus chapter 18, yeah, Joshua got counsel, but that wasn't what God wanted for him. In Joshua, we saw that in Joshua chapter 8 that God said, don't take few men take all your soldiers to go and fight a small number of people how can you imagine that that god was telling joshua don't take few men take everybody and in exodus chapter 18 we also saw the counsel here that jethro uh moses father-in-law gave to moses look at let's read from verse 19 exodus 18 from verse 19 we saw the counsel here that jethro gave to moses and moses as well uh he, he advised Moses and he advised him correctly in Exodus chapter 18 from verse 19. Exodus chapter 18 from verse 19. The Bible says, out uh, Exodus chapter 18 from verse 19. And when the voice, so he advised Moses and he told Moses exactly what to do. And Moses did exactly what he was advised to do. And Moses got victory. But what happened? Because we saw that he made a lot of he, he did not make mistake by seeking the counsel of uh, Jethro. Jethro saw what Moses was going through and decided to advise him. And thank God for that advice that he took. And at the end of the day, there was victory for uh, the people of God. And there was victory for Moses and the people of God. So he advised, he advised the counsel he gave to uh, Moses. In Exodus 18, the counsel he gave to Moses was that, Moses, you are doing too much. Share this load of work. This work you are doing, share the work and let's have have people delegate this assignment and you'll get victory and if you look at sorry exodus chapter 18 from verse 19 exodus 18 verse 19 acting now unto my voice i will give thee counsel this was moses father-in-law talking to moses i will give thee counsel because he saw that moses was weary people were coming to him everybody was coming to moses from morning till night and he was tired and he wanted to advise moses on what he needed to do in verse 8 19 and hearken now unto my voice i will give thee counsel and god shall be with thee be thou for thy people to god word that thou mayest bring the causes unto god and thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws and sh show them and thou shalt show them the way wherein they must walk and the work that they must do moreover thou shalt provide out of all the people able men such as fear god men of truth having eating conversiousness and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, to be rulers of hundred, to be rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens, and let them judge the people at all season. And it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, and every small matter they shall judge. So it shall be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. If thou do this thing, and God command thee so. This is where I'm going. Number 20, verse 23 says, And God command thee so. So even though Jethro gave moses a very sound counsel is to say if god command you so if god permits you to go ahead if god permits you to go ahead and carry out this instruction you can go ahead so moses took the matter to go and god said it's fine it's counsel good counsel he said the weight of this work will kill you if you don't delegate it you have to share the weight and that was exactly what moses did so here we saw that joshua took the counsel of the spy without discussing with god but when god was giving him strategy god said don't take two or three thousand take the entire army to go and face this little nation i god knew why he was giving that instruction because those people of i were really ready and they looked few in number but they were strong army but thank god for god who knows how to defeat 
the enemy and give us victory as we trust in him he will always give us victory all of our life number two area number two content of that strategy say lay ambush against the city if you remember how god asked them to the strategy he gave them to overcome jericho was different joshua would have said if he was very foolish spiritually let me use the word if he was foolish spiritually he would have gone and said okay let us march around i seven times like we did around jericho god didn't give him that instruction you see why important it is for you to have to be close to god you must ask god part time what is your will concerning this matter what do i do at this stage what he told you to do before might not be the same thing he's telling you to do now in terms of anything you want to do so god wants us to maintain a constant communication line with him because he's passing information across per seconds per seconds so if joshua said oh the way we won victory over over jericho was the march around jericho and he did not pray or ask god he would have gone around i and marched around i even 21 times and nothing will happen because that was not an instruction of god god said no that is not my strategy lay ambush against them send some men to hide in the forest to hide in the bush around their city and you go and pretend as if they are defeating you so as they are coming against you you draw back as if they are defeating you let some army draw back as if they are defeating you to draw them out of their city out of their town and Joshua followed that strategy and as he followed that strategy victory came get some soldiers to approach the city and pretend as if they are being defeated uh, to draw out the enemy so that was what they did they lay ambush they sent some men who went there at night and lay ambush in the forest in the old bush there around city of Ai. and some people came in and went straight ahead of them and they saw they came after those israelites and those israelites started running so the soldiers called every all the high army said oh let's chase them they ran again we defeated them before we are defeating them again so they ran and chased after them and ran after them and wanted to thinking that they have defeated the children of Israel and wanted to kill them but that was the strategy that God gave them and that was the strategy that Joshua uh, used in verse 8 of Joshua in verse 9 of Joshua chapter 8 in verse 9 we see something important again here in verse 9 it said Joshua therefore sent them forth and they went to lie ambush and abode between Bethel and I on the west side of I and Joshua lodged that night among the people so apart from the fact that he sent the lay ambush. He also sent some men to stay around Bethel and I. From what Bible scholar tells us, Bethel was a place that could reinforce, they could support I. They could they have allegiance with I. They could have supported I in fighting against the children of Israel. So Joshua sent men to make sure that they wage war, they, they, they block the support that i might get so they cut off all the armies that could they fought against better was a city that could have also provided support to i but what did they do they cut off the support that i could have gotten so they cut off support that was coming from Bethel that i could have gotten so he sent mail so what was joshua doing god was giving joshua detail of strategy like i said they could have as well did what they did before against jericho but that was not what god was saying at that time believe us are we learning from here we are learning the fact that what God tells you to do in a particular situation, even if that situation repeats itself. For example, maybe you are you are asking God for promotion, and God says, "Okay, for you to be promoted, uh, this is what you need to do: uh, talk to X, Y, Z, or do this work, and make sure you do so so thing, do X, Y, Z." And next time promotion comes again, promotion exercise comes again, and you say, "Oh, this is what God asked me to do last time; I'll do it again." It might not work. God has every moment he has a reason why he gives us what we need to do that was what happened here and god gave joshua i strategy you can see that they failed the first time because they didn't ask god and now god told them don't take the i might look small but use your entire army to face a small nation a small nation i and he sent thirty thousand. you know the whole of the population of the men in i including the men of what were about twelve thousand. and god said let thirty thousand let all the army and the army of israel were far far more than almost 50, 50 to, more than fifty thousand. he said let the entire army go and face the little the nation of i why did he ask that that's almost an overkill but god knows what he's doing he understands everything he saw that the children of israel were coming from defeat and they needed strength and that number was important so that he could and uh, they could get victory so god gives us instruction all the time we are supposed 
to follow this instruction, get instruction from him. So they block off reinforcement that would have gotten to I by also blocking off uh, better. Better was like neighboring city to I, and he said, block them off, don't let them support I so that they don't come and join their army with I and, and find a way of finding to defeat Israel. God is not stereotype. The strategy he gives to one person may be different from what he gives to another. That's true. That's true. The strategy it gives to one person may be different from what it gives to another. I remember uh, my small, I was listening to him one day and he said that when he travels at times, he travels all over the world before he went to be with the Lord and he was a preacher and a, and a, and a, and a motivational speaker. And he went out, he said, whenever he goes out at times, you see some ideas, some strategy that some church are implementing. Then when he go back to Bahamas, that's his own nation, his own country. I want to introduce similar things that he saw there. God will say, no, don't do it. But he said, God, this is what I saw there and it's good. God say, no, that's not my desire for you. That is not my plan. That's not my strategy for you. That's not my strategy for this city that you are in. So God has a strategy for every situation. That is why you should be close to God. I should be close to God. For me to get victory all the time, I need to be close to God all the time. He speaks to you all the time. He gives instruction all the time. He is always willingly to instruct and direct you. That's why you must not be far from the Almighty God. It's not stereotype. It's not stereotype. He doesn't just have, you can't predict him. And he doesn't want us to predict him as well. He doesn't want us to predict him so that you can say, oh, this is what God will say. No. The word of God is a good guide. Good. But even at that, there can be options of things to do from God's word. But it is when you pray to him that he will not direct you on what you need to do. It's also interesting to know that, that yeah, God permitted the children of Israel, the, the children, the Israelite army to take from the spoil in I in verse 8 of chapter 8 in verse 2. And that shall do to I and our king as thou did unto Jericho and our king. Only the spoil thereof and the cattle thereof shall ye take for a prey unto yourself. You see... We need to understand this God. As we are studying the word of God, you know, uh, we need to understand who this God is. When he told them, say, invade Jericho, he gave them strategy, go around Jericho seven times. One time a day, then the seventh day, seven times. And the wall will come down, penetrate the city and destroy the city. That strategy. Whatever you see as spoiled, they don't touch it. I have not permitted you to take it. Fine. He can't take it, that was a problem. But now he said, I, this is the strategy you are going to lay ambush for you to attack I, lay ambush, let some men approach them and draw them out of the city and send the city in a blaze, set it on fire so that those city, they will destroy them. And they, when they did that strategy, they succeeded. And God said, any spoil you see there, you are free to take it. In Jericho, they cannot take it. But here in I, he said you can take it. That's how God works. We need to understand how he works. That's why closeness to God is very important for success in life closeness to God. He told them, don't touch anything you see in Jericho. But when they go to I say anything you see in I, you are free to take it. If Achan had been patient, maybe the Babylonian garment he saw in a, in a Jericho that he stole, he would have seen much more than that in I. He would have gotten much more than he desired in I. Because at this time in I, God already gave them permission. And there will be no need for him to hide it. There will not be no need because God has already given the approval that anything you see in I, you can possess it. The God that said don't take for Jericho is the same God that said take from, from I. That's why we need to be close to God and we need to know Him. And as we serve Him, He will help us. Elisha, if you look at 2 Kings chapter 5, it's similar to Elisha. In 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 26, Elisha was, he prayed for a man called Naaman. And Naaman brought a lot of gifts, so many gifts. And said, oh, pro, this man has prayed for me, let me bless him before I go. But Elisha said, I'm not taking anything from you. I'm not taking anything from you. And El Gazi said, how can my master not take anything from this man? He prayed for him and he went and washed himself in the river and he became clean. I will not take anything. And Gehazi ran after the gift. And Elijah won. If you consider the second king chapter 5 verse 26. And Elisha came and said, Gehazi, why are you doing this? You don't know that there are times to take gift. There are times not to take gift. He wasn't sensitive spiritually. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Point two, the spirituality of life's battle. The spirituality of life's battle. Let's go back to our text. The spirituality of life's battle in Joshua chapter 8. Spirituality of life battle, Joshua chapter 8, in verse 18. The Bible says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Stretch out the spear that is in thy hand towards I, for I will give it into thy hand. For I will give towards I, for I will give it into thy hand. And Joshua stretched out the spear that he had in his hand towards the city. 
Verse 26, For Joshua drew not his hand back, wherewith he stretched out the spear, until he had utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai. What are we saying here? The spirituality of life. But what is the significance of taking your rod and stretching it towards Ai? Does that make any sense? It doesn't make any sense. Physically, it doesn't make sense. But <laughs> that was the spiritual part. God gave Joshua instruction. He said, we additional thing you need to do for you to get victory against I is stretch forth your rod towards I. And he stretched forth his word towards I. Life is spiritual. Battles of life are not won on the basis of strength and skills alone. There is a spiritual dimension to every battle to secure needed victory. Life is spiritual. The battles of life can be won on spiritual terms. God told Joshua, you may think that, oh, they lay ambush, the army went there and evaded, they were able to bring out the high people, they destroyed their city, how they succeeded, they were victorious, they, were, they followed divine strategy. But if Joshua had not obeyed the instruction of the Almighty God to stretch forth his sword towards I, they may still not have gotten victory. So in obeying God, we must obey God completely and totally. We saw a similar example in Exodus chapter 17 from verse 11. Exodus chapter 17 from verse 11, where God commanded when the children of Israel were attacked by the Amalekites on their, when they were setting out and God was angry and God instructed Moses on what he needed to do to get them victory. And this was these are not physical things. These are just some very acts, acts they carried out and, and that led to the victory that they got. In Exodus 17 in verse 11, the Bible says, And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let it down, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon, and Aaron and all stayed up his hand, the one on one side and the, other, and the one on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. You know, Joshua remember this scenario because it was the one that was fighting. It was part of the Buddha fought. This was about 40 years, over 40 years ago, that it was part of that scene that this thing happened. And it was there, and it was, if you look at in verse 14, the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a, in a book, and rehearse it in the years of Joshua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. So Joshua was there when Moses raised up his hand. And he didn't do it because he saw that Moses did it and got victory. Did it? Joshua fought against Jericho, he did not lift up his hand. But because he got instruction, it's similar to what God gave the children of Israel when they were fighting the Amalekites. Moses lifted up his hand. And because he lifted up his hand, the children of Israel were prevailing. It's a spiritual act. It was a spiritual act ordained and commanded by God. And the children of Israel were prevailing. But when his hand became weary and he stretched it down, the children of Israel were being defeated. And he had to, they had to help him to keep that hand up until the children of Israel got to that victory. It's similar to what Joshua was commanded by God to do here. God said, stretch forth your sword. And he stretched forth the sword. And the sword was stretched forth. And it remained stretched forth. For I don't know how many hours it took them to that battle. Joshua is a very strong man. And he kept his hands stretched for hours. Without bringing it down. And that was how they got victory over the nation of Ai. Joshua stretched forth his spear towards the city of Ai. And kept it stretched for hours. To secure victory for the Israelites. We saw that where we have read in Joshua chapter 8, verse 18 and 26. David had to wait till he had the spiritual. I'm talking, you no, know, we're looking at the spirituality of life's battle. When Josh David, if you look at 2 Samuel chapter 5, when David was anointed king of Israel and the Philistine came against him and he got victory the first time, God said, face them headlong and he faced them headlong. The second time the king, God said, don't face them headlong. Go to a mulberry tree. In that tree, you will hear the sound of the marching soldiers. It was not a physical sound. It was a spiritual sound. So he said, you will hear the sound. Once you hear the sound of, spiritual, or, of a marching soldier, know that I have given you victory. So he waited until he got commission from heaven that heaven has started this battle. Heaven is giving me victory. The armies of heaven, the host of heaven is giving me this victory. When you see war, when you see war, you understand that, yes, God is fighting. God fights on the side of his children. And in this case, we saw that David got victory because he listened to God's instruction. Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. 
Even men of the world, men that are not Christian, that are not believers, they understand the spirituality of life. That's why Christians must not be casual in the way we live our life. We must understand that life is war, life is spiritual, life is very spiritual. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17, we see here when Goliath, Goliath was a very trained man, a trained man, a warrior, a built man who could, and David was very small in stature. David confronted Goliath. You know the story of David and Goliath? David confronted Goliath. There was no way David stood a chance of defeating Goliath. Number one, David was experienced in, uh, Goliath was experienced in war. David was just a teenager, a young boy that had not fought war before. Goliath has been fighting war all his life and his spear, his sword, he was a giant. And there's no way he could have not defeated, he could, not, he could have not defeated David. But what happened? Goliath understood the spirituality of battles. And he had to invoke the power of his God. <laughs> he said, this boy is coming to me. Let's see, come and disgrace me. I cannot just go and fight him like that. He, let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17 in verse 42. The Bible tells us in 1 Samuel chapter 17 in verse 42. And when the Philistine, that's Goliath, looked about and saw David, he disdained him. For he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I now a dog that thou comest to me with staffs? And the Philistine calls David by his God. He calls David by his God. He was invoking the power of his God. But thank God, he that was with David is greater than he that was with Goliath. That was why David got the victory. God was with David. Goliath was depending on his God. But thank God, David got the victory. But I'm only pointing out that scenario to let you know that even men of the world, they know that life is spiritual. They don't joke. The politicians you see today, they think they just get to depression like that. They go and dine with the devil. They wine with the devil. Some of them enter into evil covenants. Somebody was saying that he wanted to become, uh, they wanted to, he wanted to become, is it local government chairman or a counselor? And he, he was instructed to go and sleep in the burial ground for days. And believers will be quiet. You sleep and God will give me victory. You don't pay any spiritual price. The people of the world are paying terrible price. Terrible price. Some of them will go and do all kinds, enter into all kinds of covenant just to secure what they want. But believers are sluggish. At times we are slack. We don't. We just think that we pray casually. We've not paid a lot of price, and we think victory will come our way that way. Life is spiritual, very spiritual. We learned of the story of Amen. You can read that up in Esther chapter three, from verse six. Uh, Esther chapter three, from verse six. Yeah, we saw that Amen was promoted as second in command. Let me just quickly look at it. Esther chapter three, from verse six. Aman was promoted as second in command in the land. And what did he do? Aman was there. He wanted to. And Mordecai refused to bow to him. And he wanted to say, I'm going to kill Mordecai. I will not kill only Mordecai. I will kill all the people of the Jews. And when he said that, he made up his mind to do that. But he didn't choose any. You know, these men, we should learn from them. They are not, they are not, uh, they are not casual. They are not um, haphazard in their, in their approach of things. He knew that the Jewish people were spiritual people. So he did not just choose a date. If you look at Esther chapter 3, the book of Esther chapter 3 from verse 6. And he taught scorn, that's Amen, taught scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone. For they had, grown, they had shown him, the people of Mordecai, whereof Amen sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the old kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. And the fifth month, that is the month Nisan, in the twelfth year of King the king of Azeroth, the Caspar, that is the Lord before Amon from day to day, from month to month, to the twelfth month, that is the month Adam, from the first month to the twelfth month, for twelve months every day, that's about uh, 365 days or 366 days, every day Amon was asking his God, said, which day should I kill the Jewish people? Which day should I kill the Jewish people? Which day should I kill the Jewish people? The God didn't answer him, but he never stopped. He kept the Bible saying from day to day, from month to month, up to the 12th month, from the first month up to the 12th month. He did what? He was asking from his diviners, from his gods, which day should I kill the Jewish people? And until after about one year that he got the answer. But thank God that God override that by the prayers and the fasting of Mordecai and Esther and override everything that Haman wanted to do. All to tell you that life is spiritual. We must not approach life casually. Joshua stretched forth his sword. That's what had a meaning. It had, it had implication. 
He searched all the sword and he never brought it down until I was defeated. God is telling us that let's rely on God. Let's rely on God for successes in life. Nothing is, don't look at anything from the surface. Spend time to cry to God. Life is spiritual. There are battles in life and victory comes to those that understand that life is spiritual. And the Lord will give us victory in Jesus' name. The last point before we pray is the importance of God's word. If you look at Joshua chapter 8, let's go back to Joshua chapter 8 in our text. The importance of God's word. God's word is vitally important. In Joshua chapter 8 in verse 30. Joshua chapter 8 from our text in verse 30. The Bible says, Then Joshua built an altar unto the Lord God of Israel in Mount Eber. In verse 32. And he wrote there upon the stones a copy of the law of Moses. That law of Moses is the Bible, is the scripture. He wrote there on the stones that he used to build the altar a copy of the law of Moses, which he wrote in the presence of the children of Israel. In verse 34. And afterward, he read all the words of the Lord. That words of the Lord, that all the words of the Bible. And the blessing and the cursing according to all that is written in the book of the law. And there was not a word of all that Moses commanded, which Joshua read not before the congregation of Israel, with the women and the little ones and the strangers that were conversant among them. So Joshua, after the victory, normally after such victory, what should have happened is that they should have lay, they should have strengthened themselves, get themselves ready because they could be attacked. But Joshua decided to go ahead. And fulfill an instruction that they received from God through Moses and he didn't even bother whether they could come under attack because he needed to carry out the spiritual you know you understand the spirituality of life he needed to carry out this instruction as received Joshua knew the importance of the Word of God the importance that the Word of God plays for our success he, he recalled that at the beginning in Joshua chapter 1 when Joshua started this journey go to Joshua say Joshua this book of the law this book of the law that's the Bible we say book of the law is the Bible which we're referring to again from where we have read you say Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 and this book of the law this book of the law this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success so he was telling you that this book of the law should not depart from your mouth you must meditate on it for you to be successful you must be a friend a lover of the word of god a lover of god's word thank god for your life that you are coming in here for the bible study whatever you are learning here is god's word we are teaching god's word here and it's a time to grow in god's word it's important for us to read and meditate god's word joshua knew that god has told him if i say your success depends on how you treat the word of god he said this book of the law should not depart out of your hand don't wonder joshua immediately after victory he went to emphasize the word of God, read the word of God for the people, inscribed the word of God on the altar that was built, did something around God's word because he knew the importance of God's word. Immediately after victory over I, by military sense, uh, Joshua should have kept his army at, at a lot and stand by in case the surrounding enemy come against them to challenge the victory. But he embarked on a spiritual activity in line with fulfilling God's word through the servant Moses. Uh, Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 said, Let the word of God dwell in you how? Richly, richly, richly. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 said, Let the word of God dwell in you richly. Joshua, go to Joshua from the beginning. He said, This whole book of the Lord, this Bible, this word of God should not depart out of your mouth. You should meditate in it day and night. You want to be successful? That is a secret. That was all God to Joshua. Don't wonder Joshua immediately remembered and said, No, let's go back to God's word. Even though we have gotten victory, we know God is the one that gave us victory. But he embarked on spiritual activity uh, just in line with what God commanded Moses, the servant of God. As we round up, we want to just emphasize on the importance of God's word. God's word is important. Any time you spend in studying God's word, it's not a wasted time. Like the time we are spending now to look at God's word, it's teaching, it's making you to grow. It's making you to understand those things. Like we have this recording, I will advise that from time to time, go over the recording again. I share that on a weekly basis. On after this message, you listen to it again. Your spare time, you listen to it. And you hear what God has taught us from this study. It's important for us to know that God's word is what we need for us to grow and be successful in life. There are some people that made some quotes about God. So I'll just look at them and we'll look at them and before we wrap up. So the primary purpose of reading the Bible is not to know the Bible, but to know God. Why do we read the Bible? Is it to have the knowledge of the Bible? No. It is by reading the Bible, you see the character and the way of God. You see, you understand God better by studying God's word. 
reading everything about God, look at how he deals with men. You know from the Bible, we know that God is merciful. From the Bible, we know that God is forgiving. From the Bible, we know that God rewards those that seek him diligently. From the Bible, we know that God wants us to pray. As we study the Bible, we understand God the more. We know his person. We know how he deals with people. We know how he relates with people. So the primary purpose of reading the Bible is to know God more. To know God more. To know God more. And we must spend time daily to read the Bible. That quote was from James Merritt. So he said, the primary purpose, the importance of God, the importance of reading the Bible is to know God more. So don't rush through the Bible. It's not a novel. It's not a newspaper. Spend time as you study, just like we have emphasizing now, as you take chapter by chapter, I know you are getting better understanding. We started from chapter 1 and now we are in chapter 8. It's about, we have spent 8 weeks on this now, about studying God's word. Spending one chapter at a time and emphasizing things from the Bible, seeing what God is explaining to us from his word. And it's very important for you to have this knowledge because it will equip you, it will strengthen you, it will make you to understand and realize how God deals with men and how you can work with God successfully. We saw from last week that if Joshua had prayed to God and sought divine direction, they would not have suffered defeat. So, studying God's word helped you. God instructed his people. He told them very clearly in the Bible. He said, he said, I love you to study my word. He said, the knowledge of God's word is more important to me than sacrifice. Than sacrifice. Than sacrifice. Than sacrifice. He said, this book of the Lord, told Joshua, must not depart out of your mouth. Another quote again by Charles Spurgeon. Charles Spurgeon says, he said, nobody ever had grow scripture. The book widens and deepens with our ears. So, you are seeing great men of God. Oh, the Adeboes, the Kumui, the uh, great men of God, the Oedipus and all that. He said, the Bible, nobody outgrows the scripture. The book widens and deepens with our ears. As you grow older, as you grow older in the Lord, the book makes more sense to you. you. You still discover things. Those generals that we're talking about today, they are still discovering things from the Bible. If Kenneth Egan was still alive after that man said, he said at the point he read the New Testament 150 times. As a diligent man. He said he has studied at the point he has read the Bible, the New Testament, 150 times. If that man was still alive, he would still be discovering revelation from the Bible. I think he died in 2003. He would still be discovering revelation from the Bible. So nobody outgrows the Bible, the content of the Bible. Joshua, here, after a serious battle, he went to pay emphasis on God's word. Read the word of God to the people. Everybody listened to God's word. So nobody outgrows scripture. The Bible widens and deepens with our ears. That's a quote from Charles Spurgeon. George Roosevelt, I think, is one of the American, uh, former American presidents. A thorough knowledge of the Bible is worth more than a college education that college can be university education he compared the education you get from school to the knowledge you get from the bible you see a thorough knowledge of the bible is worth more than a college education he said for him he has looked at it and said a knowledge of the bible a grounded knowledge of the bible is worth more than a university qualification he's not saying he's not against education education is good but he's saying that the the, the knowledge of the bible is very valuable that was what he was saying Say the knowledge of the Bible is very valuable to you and to me, to every one of us. Uh, Billy Graham, the later, uh, the, the wonderful evangelist that God used mightily across the globe, he made a statement. He said, The very practice of reading the Bible will have a purifying effect upon your mind. He said, As you read the Bible, you have a purifying effect. Remember, we just studied those of you that were part of when we looked at the book of James, how we studied the book of James, how it has a very purifying effect on us. How James, the life of James and all that, and I instructed the people to live a life that glorifies God. He said the very practice of reading the Bible will have a purifying effect upon your mind and heart. Let nothing take the place of the day of this daily exercise. He said, let nothing take the place. Read the Bible every day. The more you read the Bible, the more you're able to meditate on the word of God. God's word is important. Joshua saw the importance of God's word because God has told him right from the beginning. That's why even after victory. They went and emphasized, read the word of God, studied the word of God, spent time to share God's word. We saw that in verse 35. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded Moses, which Joshua read not before all the congregation of Israel, with the women and the little ones and the strangers that were conversant among them, even the little ones. So your children should be exposed to the study of God's word. Your children should have access to reading God's word. Do everything you can to spend good and quality time in God's word and you see that victory will become yours in the name of Jesus as we wrap up the study we saw that they started first in chapter 7 they tried to defeat I they failed 
because they did not talk to God about it. And now they repented, uh, dealt with the issue that brought sin and defeat in the camp, and they went to God, and God gave them strategy. They followed that strategy, and they were victorious. We saw that life is spiritual. I told you life is spiritual. Everything in life is spiritual. So you need to approach life from spiritual perspective. If the people of the world, if the people, someone like Goliath understood, Amen, and all those men that we talked about, they can go any length to understand the spirituality of life so that they can get whatever they want. We also as believers should understand that life is spiritual. The people of the world, they are not just sleeping. They then with the devil, they go length, extra length to secure victory or secure whatever they want. But we as children of God, Bible says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Our time is up. We need to spend. This is how I'm going to approach it. Always go back to God. And always hear from the Lord. Always listen to God. Always hear Him out. Let Him direct you. Let Him lead you. In every situation, in every circumstances in life. You need God. You need His guidance. You need His leading. You need God. You need God. If you are filled before Joshua filled in their first attempt. Joshua and his children of Israel filled in their first attempt at attacking I. Thank God they came back to God. They repented. They refocused on God. And they moved on. That's how what should happen to a believer. If you had experienced any failure, any problem, any any trouble don't dwell on your challenge don't dwell on that trouble don't dwell on that failure move on repent and make sure that you avoid anything that may repeat that may cause a repeat of that defeat and move on and keep on following the lord god is interested in our life he said we should follow him as we seek his face he will give us strategy strategy on how to get whatever we want from the lord strategy on how to get victory strategy on how to be successful strategy on how to make progress with our life strategy on getting all the victory that we need and we must be very very sensitive brethren sensitivity is very important as believers as saints as children of god we must be very sensitive we must know what to do at every point in time our heart our ear must be connected to the heart of god we must hear him speak to us all the time that's very important life is spiritual don't approach life casually it is a spiritual battle we are at war that's what the man of god said he said believers are at war all the days of their life a christian is a soldier who is at war all of his life we are at war we are at war we are at war and we must know that because we are at war we must live our life to the glory of god we must depend on him we must rely on him we must face him we must trust him so that we can get the victory that we need goliath knew that life is spiritual and that's why he wanted to attack joshua using the power of his god but thank god that the god we serve is far greater than the god of goliath the god we serve is far greater than the god of Amon, and they all failed because god was not on their side we saw that after joshua has gotten victory he was able as well to secure uh, he was able as well to secure to go back to god's word he went and read the word of god to the people he went and inscribed the word of god upon the altar that he built he remember joshua chapter 1 verse 8 that god said this book of the law must not depart out of your hand you must meditate on it day and night and as he stood there as he went and did things around the word of god god helped him god assisted him god supported him so we must see that god will give victory to the people the word of god is important we wrap up by telling you about the important quotes on god's word the bible is meant to help us to know god better the bible is important it's a book that you read nobody outgrows the study of the bible it is a lifetime assignment as you study it more you discover more as you study it more you receive more as you study it more more revelation comes to you and the bible is thorough someone said it's far greater than a college or university education that's what the bible is you must study it you must spend time with it you must meditate on it and therefore your success will be guaranteed and as you study the bible no to act in line with god's ways and god's will will become easy the will of god is contained in the word of god the word of god is the will of god the more of god's word that you study the easier it is for god to lead you the more God's word that you meditate on, the easier it is for God to lead you. You want divine guidance? Spend time with God's word. God will lead you in the direction of his word. So as you study God's word more and more, more and more, more and more, you see that it's easier for God to guide you, for God to lead you, for God to direct you on what you need to do. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Lord, tonight. We bless your name. We worship you for the study of tonight. Thank you for the victory that you've given the children of Israel. You gave them strategy that led to the victory over the nation of I. Father, King of glory, we also are in the world and from time to time we are confronted with battles. Lord, we pray, O oh God, for wisdom, O oh God, grace and strength to be able to, King of glory, O oh God, to have victory. Strategy we need to, uh, to implement in order to secure victory, O oh God of heaven, in life's battle. 
grant unto us in the name of Jesus. Father, may we not fail you. Help us, O God of heaven, King of glory, O God. Let us understand that life is spiritual and to approach it life in all of the spiritual sense that really matters and give us victory all the time. Father, we are praying unto you, God, give us love for your word. We saw that Joshua loved your word. Immediately after victory, he went back to the word of God carry out instruction that he was giving in God's word and read the word of God to the people for better understanding. Lord, we are praying unto you, God, as you give us this platform and this privilege to share your word every Sunday. Oh God, three, three Sundays in a month. God of heaven, I pray unto you, God of heaven, that you keep on give us, give us victory. Let us implement this thing and let it yield results and fruit in our life. And at the end, let your name be glorified. Lord, I pray for your people, Lord God of heaven, this week will be a blessed week for them. Lord, bless them, prosper their activity. Let them have testimony this week. Let them come back with great testimony, O oh God of heaven, of what you have done for them. Lord God of heaven, O oh God, and give them victory. God of heaven, and let your name alone be glorified. We give you all the praise, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you very much.